because I, I watch Ronaldinho. Yeah. Uh, I was a big fan of him. Yeah, I love like the way he feels soccer and how he plays like this joy. And actually, I in 2016, I was able to to play uh, with him in a in a soccer match. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Thank you very much. Today, I am talking with Luis Montoya, who is from Peru, professional football player. So, Luis, I'm going to hand it over to you if you just want to introduce yourself, name, age, position. Yeah, my name is Luis Montoya. I'm 23 years old. I am born in 1997. I'm left foot. Uh, my position is number eight or 10 midfielder and also winger. Great stuff. So, Luis, thanks for jumping on with us today to um, to talk about your football journey. So, where I like to start with uh, with all of this is to really ask you, where did football start for you? Where did your football star uh, journey start? Well, uh, actually, it when when I was in the school in my country in Peru in Lima, around when I was five six years old, I get into the football team there and there was the place that I started like, liking playing soccer yeah so it was like in a school what's football like in Peru is everybody football crazy in Peru is it the number one sport ah, yeah a lot <laughs> all kids want to become football player yeah yeah so you're, you're five or six years old and what you start playing for your school yes I was five six years old then I I play my school life until I was nine years or eight years and then I jo joined like a football club. And uh, with your school, do you have professional coaching? Is it just a teacher? Is it a parent? No, just a teacher, like a physics education teacher. Yeah. Right. And then so from there, you are nine years old, you signed for a club. Is this a, talk me through that local team? Yeah, I started like training for a club there in, also in Lima. It was like one hour away in my home. So that yeah, that was the time I like start training like more professionally. I train like maybe four days per week, and then I played uh, a soccer match in the weekend, in the Sunday. Yeah, the club was named uh, Sport Boys. I was there because like an uncle was a supporter of this club, and he took me there. Then I was like two years there, and then at the age of ten. 11, I went to uh, this soccer club that its name is called EGB. Yeah, it's like in, for like academic, like uh, soccer school is like the best in Peru. Okay. Like no professional, like for minor, for minors. Yeah. There's, yes, there is like uh, all players want to become professional. This is where it's more professionally focused yeah, on that. So there I train all the days. Yes. All the days, and I played uh, on the weekends. Yeah, yeah. It's like a a professional week, like yeah. yeah, since eleven, yeah, till sixteen, yeah. Right. So that's your training every day of the week with those, with that team, with that academy. Yes, every day of the week and weekends playing. Yeah, it's well, like the same, the same schedule as as a professional team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how many hours would you train with that academy? Two hours, two hours half. This is close to home for you. No, actually, it was close to my school, like half hour away, because it was like me going to school. Then after school, I finish like 3 p.m. Then I go to training. Yeah, the training is four to six, and then I return to my house. Yeah, right. from this uh, training, from the training field to my house, yeah, it's very far. It's like two hours away, maybe. Yeah. Right. Wow. So was that your uncle taking you to there, or was that parents? Or was it yourself? Yeah. Some, sometime uh, my grandfather, yeah. yeah. But o almost I, I was there going by myself. So you'd take yourself from school to your training and then get yourself back home again? Yes. yes. Yeah, every day. That's commitment. Yeah, every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, th and then you still, would you play outside of your academy? So would you still be, you know, messing around with your mates down the park, in the street? Or yeah, after that, yeah, 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 yes, yes. Usually, when I was like on vacations of my of my football club, yeah, I go like play soccer with my friends there near my neighborhood. Yeah, mm. were you football crazy from the start? Did you love? Yeah, football I, from the start? 
I usually like I used to watch many Barcelona's games when I was like very I was maybe four years five six seven and there was the time that I like we be, uh, became in love with soccer because I, I watch Ronaldinho yeah yeah I was a big fan of him yeah I love like the way he feels soccer and how he plays like this joy and actually I in 2016 uh, when I was playing for this uh, Peruvian team uh, called Cienciano, I was able to to play uh, with him in a in a soccer match. Yeah, in, a, in an exhibition match. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, in YouTube. <laughs> How was that, that whole game? Yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, you play like 45 minutes. <laughs> he came for playing like an exhibition match. Only one match. Yeah, an exhibition match. Yeah, in for this club, Cienciano, we yeah. play like in the same team. He yeah. play half time of that match yeah, it was like amazing yeah. <laughs> he did like a lot of stuff yeah I bet he was still class eh? was he still the best player on the park yeah I still he did a lot like two assists without looking <laughs> oh, really? it was really nice <laughs> yeah did you get his shirt yes you did like I I like the club gave us like three shirts extra shirts like for him to sing in yeah. <laughs> to sing the shirts. yeah yeah, talk, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I those shares I gave like to my family, and I kept like the one with the shirt which I played, yeah, yeah. with his sign also. Yeah. Amazing, it was a very nice, yeah. amazing. That would have been a great moment for you. So, he he was your um, your inspiration, your favorite player as a as a kid coming up, yes, yes. yeah. And yes, would you say have you modeled the way you play around him? Do you play similar similar type of style? I try like play with his. Of course, I I try to like do his movements and of his same position. Yeah. Yeah, mate. That's uh, that's amazing. Not a lot of people could say that they played with their idol. So. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's an amazing <laughs> experience. Yeah. Great experience. Yeah. So you're obviously, you're nine years old, you go into this academy and you're there for a few years. How old were you when you realised that you wanted football to become, you know, you wanted to take football seriously and pursue it as a career? Maybe when I, uh, yeah, for sure, when I start going to this academy that I told you that I went like all the days training, it was like 10, 10 years old. Yeah, I start like being this, like seeing football like as a, as a career, yeah. Right. You know, you're in this academy that is quite a professional setup by the sounds of it, and you've decided that this is what you want to pursue. Did you know what you had to do to try and become a professional? Did you know how hard it was going to be? What happened in your mind? What were you thinking? Yeah, of course, I thought that it will be like hard, but at that time, I was just only thinking on enjoying like the game, <laughs> the games, the trainings, and like all was like. No, no troubles, you know, because, you know, when it's like in this stage of like training, when you are young, you only like focus on enjoying the game, right? It's yeah. not when you go out like uh, the professional work, it's like you realize that it's more tough. Yeah, it's definitely. more hard. Yeah. And was there, was there anyone there giving you some guidance? So whether it was in the academy or in your family or your circle of friends? Yeah, actually, it was like one trainer there. Yeah, that it was my first trainer in that uh, academy, and he told me that if I focus, I can like uh, reach being professional uh, soccer. Because he told me he is very experienced. He trained like also another players. You know uh, Jefferson Farfan and Paolo Guerrero. Yes. He he's played like in PCV in Doven and Schalke. Okay. Yeah. Zero four. Yeah. Yeah, he trained uh, these two players also when they were young. Yeah, so he told me that I have like potential, and, and if I focus, if I want, I can like become professional footballer. I still talk with him. Yeah, he we have a good relationship. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. He's, yeah, he's like a dad for me. <laughs> yes. Mate, that's amazing to hear. I think you know a lot of coaches probably don't realize the impact that they do have on on young kids and the messages that you're giving to these kids, you know, you hold yeah. on to them for your whole life and your whole career, really, you know, 
So it's, it really is important that you, and I think it's great that you had a good coach like that. Yes. Yeah. Actually, there were his words that like, made me decide that I, I wanted to, to become a professional footballer. Yeah. Have you ever told him that? Does he know? Not, not with the exact words, but uh, yeah, I always, when we talk, like the times where we talk, I'm very, like, I say thank you so much for all your, like, your teaches that you give me. All the things that you teach me, yeah, they, they work for me, like, a lot, yeah. And then, so, it's been how, do you, how do you, at that age, did you mix your kind of social life, you know, hanging out with friends and, um, I don't know, messing around with them, with your football, did football get in the way of that a lot? For me, it was like no sacrifice because I, I love like doing, going to training, playing, yeah. And I also actually made a lot of, of friends in soccer, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a sacrifice when you're chasing your dream, right? It's something that you're passionate about. Yeah, of course, it's no sacrifice. Mm. Yeah. How did your friends see it though? Did your friends see it that way? Did they understand what you were trying to do, or did some of them not quite get no. what you were chasing? Actually, all were all were like all understand well because also they always ask me like how. Right. So, so how old are you when you leave that academy? I was uh, 16, 16, yeah, sixteen years. Old. And you leave because of what reason? I went to my first professional team. Yeah. How does that come about? Actually, two thousand fifteen, no, two thousand fourteen. Um, I was part of the Peru national team, like under 20. All oh, right, awesome. Yeah, I was like two years younger than the 60. I was 60. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, welcome back. So we had a bit of technical difficulties there, but we have got uh, Louis back again. So sorry about that, mate. Glad you got your internet back. So you were telling us you have just uh, found out that you've been called up to the national team. So just remind us, how did you find that out? Uh, actually, in my, they said to me in the club that I was going, like two days before the list was released, that I was going to be part of the national team. So it was like a great, I was so proud of that because it's like representing your national team. It's like, it's like, the, it's very nice right? because there is only like 23 players that yeah. they are called all like the, from each Category is like, I don't know, maybe 150 player plus. So. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So who was the first person you went and told? That I told. Yeah, who did you who did you call first of all when you found out? My grandfather, yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah? Because he was like always, when I was a kid, like five to ten years old, he was the one that was driving me to all the trainings. Brilliant. So he was like, I said, yeah. That must have felt really good being able to call him up and tell him that info, that that news. Yeah, he was very happy. Yeah, I can he imagine. Very... And who were you playing? What was the game? Uh, we do uh, we travel to Argentina and Uruguay, so we play like in their in their federation. We play two matches. Yeah, right. for, yeah against two matches against Argentina and two matches against Uruguay. I play against, you know, uh, this uh, football player, the striker Giovanni Simeone, the son of, of oh, uh, Diego the, Simeone. The coach. Yeah. Yeah, really? Play, uh, yeah. Yeah. He scored like. <laughs> <laughs> Is he as good as his dad? Like, he's a very, very good player. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So, so uh, how did your game go? Did you tell us a bit about your, your international? Did you make your debut? Yes, I played. I played like uh, the last 30 minutes of the first match against Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, the second match of our, against the, we play also against Argentina. I play like from a start, uh, like 70 minutes. Yeah. Right. And, and what's that experience like? Does it is it different to what you were used to in your club level? Um, the you know the dressing room, the training, the coaches, the fans, like the nerves before the game. Is there a difference between your club? Yes, of course. It was like all like more professional, yeah, and more serious because it was like I have also like I told you I was like two years younger than the, my other teammates, so I was just trying to to keep up with 
what the trainer said to me with the orders from the trainer. Yeah. And standing on the sideline when you're about to get subbed on, what's going through your head? I, the trainer was like giving me the task that I have to do in the pitch, but I can't remember because I was like nervous and excited <laughs> also for, for entering into the pitch. Yeah. So what happens when you get on the pitch? Did you Were you straight in, involved and got a touch early on, settled down the nerves or did it take a while for you to, uh, to get a touch of the ball? What happened? No, it was good actually. Yes, it was like ner the nerves goes, and I was like only excited about the, those minutes playing, and I try to enjoy it the most. What happens next then? So you get called up to the national team. You make a couple of appearances there. Where where do you go next, or what team are you at next? I train like that five more months or six more months maybe in the national team, and then I sign my first professional contract with a club there in Peru also that is called Universitario de Deportes. That is one of the two biggest clubs in Peru, well, actually. Right. Yeah. I was 17 when I, when I signed. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. of because of my experience in the national team, yeah, they, they signed. Yeah. No. And so you're signed to the senior team there, to the first team? The first team, yeah. Yeah. And uh, when you say they're the second biggest club in Peru, what, what are we talking here? How many fans do they get to a game? For example, there were games that we play maybe 25,000 people. Yeah. Amazing. Like that. Because the, actually the stadium is one of the biggest of South America. Its capacity is like 60,000 people. And with the higher level, like this like private uh, spaces, Right. It reached 80,000. Right, wow. Yeah. I see. Was it built for, did they used to fill it or was it built for like a, a tournament or something? What? Where did it come from? It, actually, it was, it's the stadium of the, of the club. Yeah. But right. they use it, but it gets like fully, it gets full when it plays like the national team. Peru, the Peruvian national team, the senior team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they get full. Yes. Yeah. And how does that feel for you when you're when you're playing uh, in front of twenty five thousand people? Do you are you aware that you're playing in front of that many people, or do you are you able to focus and kind of zone out and you don't really acknowledge that they're there? It took me like two to three games, like uh, getting the nerves out because it's like different playing from for your team or under 20 not professional that you don't you only play like only they see like a, I don't know maybe 100 200 people yeah. and it's like all teammates or people you know or yeah. parents yeah. and play in a big stadium with a lot of people yeah, yeah. and, and what's, it like, what's it like on the pitch is it hard to hear your teammates you can hear so yeah. they have, at least you're like one meter of distance, you can hear, but if you're, for example, three meter, four meter, five meters, you can't. <laughs> so you, hear <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta hope that you've got good vision. <laughs> yeah, <we can. laughs> yes. Nice. So, uh, how long did you, how long did you stay at that club for? I was like one year and a half, and then I get on loan to another club in Peru. Still. Uh, yes. Yep. How old are you at this point? Like 19, yeah, 19, when I get loaned to this other club, yeah. And what? why did you get loaned out? What happened there? Uh, for like uh, searching more minutes, yes. Because like I was young and that team is like, they play also like national national players already. So I, I the time I spent at that club, I played, yeah, I have the experience. But for me to play in more games, I... I take this opportunity of go, going in loan. Yes. Yeah. And is that a tough decision for you? Is that something that you you approach the club saying you want more minutes to loan me out? Or do the club say to you, look, we think to help your development, we should loan you to another team where you'll get more game time? How does that work? Actually, uh, it was because uh, that year, the team that I went in loan, uh, the the first coach, the coach was uh, my coach also in my team under uh, 18, yes. 
Right. So I knew the coach already. Uh, and I trust like, the coach. And he talked to me. He said to me that he wanted to come with me with this new project that he had. So I went with him. Yeah. Because I feel that I can play more and also improve yeah. by his side. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you go there and how long are you there for? One year. One year. Yeah. What's it like going in as a, uh, I'm assuming it was a new coach he had just taken over that team? Yes. No, yeah. it was my, I know, I, I knew already the coach. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you knew him, but was he was new to that club? He had just signed with them as well? So, so what's it like for you as a as a young player and a new player who's been brought in by a new coach? So you you know from the players who are in the squad already there potentially feeling a bit threatened because you're coming in and taking someone's spot. How do you how well do you get received in that situation? Actually, the, it was pretty good because there was like only five or six players that was from the previous season. And then it was like a whole new team. Quite easy for you to settle in then. Yes, yes, because it's like it was like a new team. Yeah, yeah sure. And did, did you get much time, much game time when you were there? Yes, I play almost all the matches. Yeah. Brilliant. How did you play? Well? <laughs> yes, also it was uh, this club was uh, outside Lima. Yeah, outside the capital. Right. And they're still yes. in the top division? Like great history because it's the only Peruvian team that uh, win an international tournament. They win this uh, Copa Sudamericana. Right. Yeah. Against River Plate. Yeah. All right. So there's uh, some big history then. So does that mean they have a um, a bit of a big following? They get some good crowds. Also, but not so much as Universitario. But maybe people, the crowd of each game was 8,000 to 10,000, yeah. Yeah. Still, that's a, that's a fair few eyeballs on you. There's a bit of pressure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so you stay there for how long? What, what's next in your journey from there? One, I stay one season there. And you go from there to? I go there to this club also, Leon de Huanuco. Also outside Lima. Right, so in, in Peru, still in the same league? Yes. Yep. How, how do you end up there? My coach was going, the same coach was going to train that club. Right. So I already did like an agreement, a contract agreement with that club. But at the last time, uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but my coach and, uh, and the club didn't reach an agreement. But I was already signed, so I had to play like. That, right. that club, yeah. <laughs> how, how did you feel about that going when and you know you sign because you think you're going to have one coach and it ends up being someone else how does that work out i was a, a bit disappointed but also i had to i was already signed so I, yeah i had only my best yeah but yeah. i, I have another choice yeah how did it go for you yeah yeah it was a good experience so you're at that team for how long all also one season. Another yeah. season. And then you move on to? To my last season club. That was 2019. And that's where? Where is that one? The name of the club is Sport Loreto. Yeah. Peru it's... again, same league? Yeah, same league, yeah. Yeah. So how, how do these transfers for you come around? How do you, how do you find these opportunities at these other teams? Do you have an agent that works for you or are you doing it yourself? Do the clubs approach you? How does it materialize? I was doing by myself, but the two teams that I told you is Cinciano and Leon de Huanuco. I reached uh, because my coach, like my coach asked for me. Yeah. And then this last team, uh, I reached because uh, an agent, actually, he, he works with the club. So he proposed me to a club and the club accepted me. And then that's the reason I signed. So in in the first instance, the ones that you you off your own back, you were contacting the club to say, "Hey, I'm available. Are you looking for players?" Is that how that worked? No, like in the last season, uh, the agent that know me knew me since yeah. I was a young player. Uh, he was working with this team, so mm -hmm. the team asked him uh, for players. Yeah. 
for the yeah for that season and he proposed to me to a club sure yeah, yeah. and the clubs before that so previous before the agent the two before those are the ones that you found on your own no the the other two clubs yeah it was just because of the coach through the coach was it coach yeah yeah okay with you right i see so so you've you've done another season there and now uh i'm assuming we are up to today right so you finished that was last yeah. season and now yeah. you're on a mission to find a new club and you are currently in Dubai, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you talk, maybe talk us through that situation, what kind of materialised from the end of your season to where you are now and, and I guess how you got stuck there for a little while and talk us through that maybe. Yeah. I, I was like, actually, I ended last season and I... I felt like I was. I wanted to try like something new, <laughs> so uh, I get contact by a Turkish agent that proposed to me to this opportunity in Dubai. So I travel from Peru to Turkey. Then I stay like one month there training and preparing me for uh, coming here. I came here like 16 March. Then two days after for training with clubs, then two days after like all closed because Corona virus. Yeah, so I get stuck uh, since then. <laughs> so you got stuck in Dubai since March. <laughs> you uh, and did did you have an opportunity to go home or did they close down everything, so you couldn't fly out? No. Only it was like repat re repatriation flights. Yeah. That. Uh, embassy of Peru gives, but it was not free. It cost like maybe one thousand three hundred dollars, one thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So you made so a was... decision to, as you, I'm assuming. So you, when you went to Dubai, you paid for that off your own back, or did the agent pay for you to get to Dubai? No, the agent paid me like the flight ticket. Yeah. Right. Okay. So he paid for you to get there. So then because you're there, you want to wait to see it out to try and hopefully the clubs open back up and you can, you know. Yes, actually I was like, staying in accommodation with another players also that come for this opportunity. From the same agent? Like, yeah. No, no, another, different. Right. But same club. And like we find out like two days after we like came like all is closed. So, yes, it was very difficult. Yeah, definitely. You've been away from family for a long time. Is that uh, is that something new to you, or you've had to deal with that with the clubs you were in previously? Well, now it's almost five months. It's like it's not new situation because like I was playing uh, since I was a kid, like outside Lima. Yeah. So the uh, last three years I played outside. Yeah. So uh, I am like, a little issue yeah, to that. Yeah. You you're still very young, you're still what is it, twenty three that you are? Yeah, born in yeah, almost. Yeah. Almost twenty three. I turned twenty three in June. Yeah. Uh, happy birthday. <laughs> so so you're still very, very young and you know, it sounds like you've had a um quite a journey so far already through quite a lot of opportunities that you know, a lot of players are probably bite your hand off to get at these clubs. So what I'm interested to find out is how do you think you got where you are now? How do you think you got to become a professional footballer? Well, because like since I was little, like 10 years, maybe nine years, I I was like quite sure that I wanted to, to become a professional footballer. So... Since that age, I worked very hard for for accomplishing this this goal. Yes. So, so maybe talk a bit about that for us. So, you you obviously become aware that you want to be a professional footballer, but what what do you do at that point? You know, how are you how are you going about becoming a professional to achieve those goals? Are you you know where where are you going to for inspiration and motivation on what you need to do to guide you to become a pro or are you just you know you seem to be 
natural at it and you're in the right place at the right time or are you like you know relentless and you're, you're training every day and you just breathe football talk to us about that actually it was a trainer that i have uh, my first trainer in my club of in this academy agb that talked to me and said to me that if i focus i can i can become like a professional footballer so it was like his words that give me the the motivation yeah and since then like i work like every day i train and i train like focusing focusing in in this in accomplishing this and and how do you structure your week then for your training i train like to monday to friday for from 4 p.m to 6 30. then saturday we have matches Sunday was free day and then Monday all we start again and like that. Yeah. And that's almost with five years. Yeah. Five years. Well all only since I was ten. It's like this. Yeah. Until now. Yeah. Now uh, time that I have most vacations because of Corona. <laughs> Enjoy the holiday. So what what's the um actually what is your schedule like now? Corona aside, but when you're at a professional club now, compared to what you were doing when you were a kid, are you are you doing anything outside of the club? So do you do any training on your own, or is everything just whatever the club gives you? You do. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes we uh, with our group of players like hire one outside trainer, like fitness trainer. So we do like uh, extra work at the gym for improving like speed, jumping, that's, those things. Yeah, technique also. Yeah. How much time would but you it, spend in the week working on your technique? For example, if uh, I train like five times and only one time in my club, like per day, maybe to two or to three times. Yeah, I we train extra. Yes, right. because it was like nation with with uh, also the trainer of our club for like managing the the church yes and not getting injured yeah sure and, and how long would you spend how long is each session with the club almost every time was like two hours to two hours and a half mm -hmm. and the trainer one hour yes yeah nice. yes training was one hour nice. so what what do you where do you go as a professional footballer? Where do you turn for inspiration or motivation? I'm sure you probably have days where you just can't be bothered to get up and, you know, go outside in the rain or whatever it may be and, and go train. What do you do in your those days where you're lacking that motivation? Actually, like, it never, like, happened. Like, lacking of no motivation. No. <laughs> Even if it's raining or we have, like, training 5 a.m. or 4 a.m., I will be like the first there, yeah. Oh, yeah. When so it comes like it. football, yeah, I'm like, yeah. You love it. Because I love, yeah, I love football. What's your your next step for you then? So obviously you're in Dubai. You're hoping that Corona, kind of, uh, the conditions get better so that things can open up for you. Yes. Well, now, uh, like I know that in September. It starts like September, October. It starts again the new season yeah. in Europe and Asia. And I hope like finding a a club uh, in these two, yeah, in the, I don't know any European league or Asian league. Yeah, that lead me to like moving forward my career. Yeah, yeah. So you're just on the lookout for a club now. Fingers yes. crossed that uh, conditions ease around the globe and it becomes a bit easier for, uh, for you to travel and the, the team start training over there. Um, one, one thing I've got, I do want to ask you for our, you know, the, the guys and girls that watch this, the younger players, what advice would you give to a younger player who is looking to follow, you know, in your footsteps and become a professional footballer? That always believe in your abilities, in your football, for all over the things. Have too much self-confidence. Work hard and follow your dreams. 
they should visualize like and do what it takes for reaching them and also don't waste time on things that can like distract you or get you far off your objectives yeah and the most important is that enjoy every moment every, every training every match that you have yeah you have to enjoy the journey yeah and amazing that's true i think and your prime example right where you're saying that you're the first one there at five in the morning and that's a testament because you truly love it if you i think if you don't really love it uh there's always going to be someone that's going to work harder than you because on those days where it's hard you're not going to be doing it you're not going to put in the effort but there's always going to be someone who does love it genuinely and they're going to be there working harder yeah of course even like you are so talented if you don't combine that with hard work it it will be never enough <laughs> have to be that yeah very true so you actually mentioned something there that was quite interesting you said they need to visualize it do you practice visualization yeah actually i love like watching a lot of football games for example if i watch i don't know barcelona against manchester city i am focused like in not the game, but I'm like particularly focused in the players that play in my position. Mm -hmm. So I can learn because also watching uh, this and analyzing, it's very important such as training. Mm -hmm. Because you can see the good things that these great players does and you can copy them or you can learn from them. Mm, yeah, that's a great point. I think that's right, spot on. And and do you do any any kind of how do you retain that information? Are you just watching it, or are you actively taking notes and going over it? No, I watch. I like the the matches, and I also I follow like by Instagram these pages of uh, Instagram page for, of analysis, like the they analyze tactics, like the teams tactics, also. They analyze like particularly every player, so I'm spend like yes maybe I spend yeah for the day I I watch these things. Working on your craft. Yes. Working on your craft, increasing your knowledge in in your profession, makes perfect sense. Yes, because now it's like there are a lot of information and examples and videos that you can like take advantage advantage for learning i don't know how to make a better control a better shoot, a lot of things now yeah. even uh, there are like videos of last day i saw a video of xavi like teaching another player how to by his own words by his own like he's like doing it yeah how to control the ball properly yeah and he's talking so, to other professionals or he's talking to young, younger players? For example, player from 20 years, 19 years, there when he's in Qatar. Yeah. I also see, well, for example, uh, the, the talks of the trainers when they are in, in the dressing room. To, for example, of Zidane, I don't know, Bielsa, these yeah. players. Uh, they always learn. Yeah, you always learn something. Yeah. Well, yeah. you learn a lot, actually. <laughs> I think that's an important point, right? They're working on the fundamentals, on the absolute basics. Because if yeah. you get them down right, the rest of the game becomes easier for you. Because you know, of course, how to control a ball or how to shoot. But these players that are like the best in these things, uh, they all always add like something special. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you can take it. Yeah, good point. So, is there is there any one thing in particular that you would advise a younger player to focus on or to work on? Is there anything in particular that stands out to you? The only that they train hard and uh, they like to. If they really want to become like professional footballers, they have to all the day like finish think in football, like play. Also, when they get home, if they can watch games for learning things, it's better. Uh, having a proper alimentation, rest, good yeah. habits. Yeah, because it's not only like training two hours a day and that's it. No. Mm. You have to take 
quality of the whole business. Yeah, so you're, you're a 24-hour athlete. Yes. It, it's more than just what happens on the pitch. That's, I think that's also something. in your free day. That's, sorry again? Also in your free day. Yeah, you have to rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So, I guess changing the tone a little bit, what would you say is your biggest regret in football? My biggest regret? Uh, maybe trusting in some people in the past that said me like they will help me and let me guide sometimes by them when they were like only looking for their own interests and because I was like too young I didn't like realize about it yeah was uh, so innocent that time right and are we talking kind of agents here are we talking coaches or just friends yeah Agents, ma mainly agents, yeah. Because it's like hard, like finding like an agent that actually cares about you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like really. Hard. Uh, uh, it's for them like it's all all about the money for the most, not for everyone, of course. Mm -hmm. Because they are that they care about the player. Yeah. What would you say if you could go back and tell your younger self something now? about being aware about that is there something particular that you should check out with an agent like is there how do you find out if that agent is legitimate and actually cares about his players what would you say to your younger self analyze more like all the situations and like think uh, for myself what is best for me yeah, not what he told me or they told me yeah that's mm. me. Yeah. yeah so do some uh, self-analysis and do your own research and just don't don't just rely on what they're going to tell you. Yes, like, no trust like blind eyes. Yeah, you have to trust, but also you have to to check by yourself. Yeah, and mostly in football, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, that's it. Do your own homework, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think I've just got uh, one more question for you, and. Uh, yes. You kind of covered it already, but I just want to let's let's see if there's anything different that you might say. So, if you can go back now, and this is talking about anything, so not specifically about agents or anything like that, but if you could go back to your younger self and give yourself one bit of advice, what would that advice be? Yeah, trust always in yourself. Yeah, that's it. Trust always in yourself. Trust always in in your football. Trust always in your skills. Yeah. yeah, it's the only thing that it will keep you up. Yeah, because you are in football, you are like alone. Mm. <laughs> you have to take care of, your, of yourself. Mm. Yeah. So don't worry too much about the opinions of others and have belief in your own ability. Yes, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Amazing. Great. Well, it's been uh, interesting hearing your story and your journey and. Uh, appreciate you sharing that with us so thank you very much for coming on it uh from where i'm sitting and watching you know it, I, it looks like you're still very young and you've had and achieved a lot so far so it, you know i hope that the rest of your career is you know just as promising and that you uh, you finally get out of dubai <laughs> or at least find a club in dubai that would be good right so before you go i don't know if you'd like to tell the viewers where they can find you if they want to follow you along and give you some support and follow your journey. Do you have an Instagram account or anywhere, any social media that they can find you? Yeah, I have this Instagram account actually. It's uh, one for Luis Montoya. One for Luis Montoya. Yes. Make sure you check him out, everyone. Well, Luis, thank you very much for coming on, mate. I really appreciate that. And uh, I know we had some technical difficulties, so thank you for uh, going to the effort of fixing that. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Also, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.